Hey guys, YouTuber and Hendrick here. Okay, and with Halloween approaching, I do have uh, something um, planned for Halloween this year, like something planned like that I'm going to do for my videos in honor of Halloween, but I'm going to announce that at the, like, later on this week, like, when it, like, kind of, like, gets to the uh, right time for me to, like, start doing the stuff, but in the meantime... <clears throat> Until then, I figured I would just, like, uh, do this video to just, like, to get something out to you guys in the meantime until I am ready to actually announce what my plans are this year for uh, Halloween. So, yeah, I figured, like, with it <clears throat> being October, I figured that I would, like, make a retro wrestling review for an old No Mercy show like I did last month when I did one in honor for Unforgiven being in September. And so, yeah, I decided to take a look at uh, No Mercy 2001. So, yeah, I figured that I would do this one, seeing as how I really have, like, reviewed, like, all the um, other um, pay-per-views in 2001 that took place during, like, the invasion angle, and this is the only one that I really haven't talked about. So, I figured I would just do this one to, like just finish off, like, reviewing the 2001 pay-per-views that took place during the Invasion Angle. And so, yeah, uh, this was a, a pretty good, maybe even great show. Yeah, I mean, I really don't hear a lot of people really, um, talking about, uh, this, uh, pay-per-view very much, but yeah, it was, like, a really, really good to great pay-per-view. I mean, yeah, I mean, not everything about it really was, like, all that good. Like, it did have, like, some kind of, like, below-average matches, but there was really nothing that on it that was truly terrible. I mean, the show was really, like, it, this was pretty much a three-match show. It had, like, three really awesome matches, and the rest of the card, like I said, there were, like, a couple of matches that really, like, weren't all that hot, but there was nothing really on the show that really was, like, really, like, terrible or anything. Like, there were still, like, like, like I said, it had, like, three really awesome matches on the show, and it had some other good ones as well. So, yeah, overall, I really cannot find very much to really um, complain about this show. I mean, like I said, it did have, like, a couple of, like, matches that really weren't all that good, but, I mean, there was nothing on here that really was, like, really that terrible. So, yeah, I really think that this is a pay-per-view that really does get pretty overlooked, because, yeah, like I said, I really don't hear a lot of people really talking about this pay-per-view. Yeah, it really is, like, a... A really, really good to great show, as I said. Like, if you haven't seen this before, I would suggest checking it out. Because, yeah, the show definitely is uh, worth a watch. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, I had, like, watched the show, like, like quite a few times when I was younger. And, yeah, I did like it. I mean, I did, like, kind of um dread the show at the time because when I first saw it. Because, um yeah, because I'll, in a lot of these matches, like, the people that I were... I was pulling for to win, ended up losing a lot of the matches on the show, so it kind of, like, made me, like, kind of dread the show in a way when I did, like, see it for the first time, but over time, I just, like, see that it's not really, like, I shouldn't really let, like, whoever, like, wins or lose really, like, affect how I feel about the show, because, yeah, the show overall, well, it still did have, like, it still was, like, really, really good, and I, there really isn't a whole lot to really um, complain about with the show, so, yeah, so, I do like the show, and I do think that it is a really, really good to great show, and it really does get very overlooked, because I really don't hear people really talking about this um, show, and especially when it comes to, like, 2001 pay-per-views, and even, like, just pay-per-views in general. So, yeah, I think that's kind of a shame that it gets overlooked, because, yeah, there really is, like, a is a very enjoyable show, and I really do think that it is worth a watch. So, yeah, like I said, if you haven't seen this pay-per-view before, I would seriously recommend checking it out, because, yeah, it really is, like, such an enjoyable show, especially with the three awesome matches I will talk about in this review. All right. But anyway, okay, let me just uh, talk about the match card. All right. So the first match on the show was, was for the WCW Tag Team Championship. It was the Hardy Boys defending against the Hurricane and Lance Storm. And this was a pretty good match right here. I mean, yeah. Like, um, like it was basically what you want to see in an opener. Like, a solid and entertaining way to start off the show. And really does not really um, overshadow the rest of the card. And yeah, it really was a, a pretty entertaining opener. I mean, yeah. I mean, in this match, you did have, like, um... 
the hurricane and a uh, landstorm were um I'm like doing like a lot of double team moves on the Hardy Boys, and the Hardy Boys like would like end up like countering a lot of their attacks in the match. I remember at one point in the match as a uh, it was either Hurricane or Landstorm, I forgot which one, but they had, like, a Jeff on the outside of the ring, and uh, the other guy, whoever was on the inside, was going to do, like, a baseball slide or something to Jeff, and then Matt ended up, like, attacking that guy. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, like I said, it was, like, a really, really entertaining back-and-forth match. As I said, uh, Hurricane and Landstorm tried to, like, Double team the Hardy Boys on the match, and the Hardy Boys end up countering. You had um Lita, of course, in the Hardy Boys corner, and you had um Ivory and Mighty Molly in um Hurricane Landstorm's corner, and yeah, you know, like a uh, Molly and Ivory tried to get involved in the match, and Lito like ended up like battling with them, and then at one point like uh Jeff ended up attacking Ivory, and but then Landstorm then and like attacked Jeff and tried. I'll apply the Canadian Maple Leaf onto um Jeff, and then Lita performed the uh, Lita can run on the Storm, and then eventually, then the match then like uh, ended with a uh, Matt giving a twist of fate to Hurricane, and then Jeff delivering a Swanton Bomb, and then yeah, Matt then got the pin on Hurricane, and Hardy Boys won and retained the WCW Tag Team Title. So yeah, uh, so like I said, a really good opener and a pretty good way to um start off the show. So I would give this match about uh, three stars. And then the next match of the night was uh, Test versus Kane, and yeah, surprisingly, this was actually a pretty good match right here. I mean, I know like when you're like like hearing like Test being a match, you're probably thinking that the match really is not going to turn out very good because yeah, a lot of Test matches really did not uh, turn out very good. But yeah, this was surprisingly pretty good right here. Yeah, in this match, like uh, Test was doing like a lot of. Uh, like, uh, doing a lot of, like, uh, dirty heel tactics in the match. Like, at one point, like, uh, Tess, uh, nailed, the uh, Kane in the head with the ring bell. Well, and, like, the referee for this match, of course, was, like, Nick Patrick, an alliance referee, so he, of course, like, didn't, uh, call for disqualification when that happened. Yeah. No. And then throughout the match, like, Tess then just, like, was doing, like, some more, like, dirty heel tactics throughout the match, yeah. And then, like, Kane then was, like, then, like, was getting some offense, and then this match as well, like, he got a neck breaker in on Tess in the match, and then eventually, like, uh, Tess, Tess then, uh, like, also, like, uh, tried to, um, like, uh, 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 get a, uh, throw a king to the ring post and then hit a big boot, but then, then, like, uh, then, but, uh, Tess ended up, uh, well, yeah, Tess then also ended up, like, uh, bleeding from his mouth in the match, and then, like, uh, King then ended up, like, ducking another big boot attempt from, a uh, Tess, and then, yeah, uh, Kane then, like, hit a choke slam on Tess, but Tess survived it, and then, yeah, Kane also, like, tried a, a flying clothesline on Tess, but Tess avoided it, and then was able to get a pump handle slam on Kane, and it looked like that might have been it, but, uh, Kane kicked out of it, and then Tess then, him, like, hit a, a flying elbow drop on, uh, Kane, and it looked like that might have been it, but, uh, Kane survived, and then, at the end of this match, like, uh, Tess brought a chair into the ring, trying to do it again, of course, like, with Nick Patrick being the referee, he knew that Nick Patrick wasn't going to disqualify him, him, but then, uh, yeah, Kane then just ended up, like, kicking the chair into, uh, Tess' face, and then he tried to use it on Tess, but Nick Patrick then disarmed Kane, and then Kane then just had enough with Nick Patrick, and then Tess was going to choke slam Nick Patrick, and then Tess tried to come at Kane, but then Kane grabbed Tess by the throat, and then Kane just, like, threw Nick Patrick back, and then and was going to choke slam Tess, but then Tess, like, hit Kane with a, uh, a low blow, it looked like, and then hit uh, Kane with a big boot, and then that allowed Tess to get the win, so yeah, Tess won the match, and then afterwards, then, yeah, Kane, of course, like, pissed at Nick Patrick, then attacked him, he gave Nick Patrick two choke slams and a power bomb. so, yeah, it's cool to see, like, Nick Patrick get beat up like that, I mean, yeah, of course, like, throughout the entire story of Invasion, like, there were, like, times where Nick Patrick would always get attacked, of course, like, at the Invasion pay-per-view, there was his match with Earl Hebner at SummerSlam 2001, when, like, he disqualified a Stone Cold, 
old for so he could retain the title in the match with Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle attacked Nick Patrick, and then we have this too. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, overall the match was surprisingly pretty good. Like I said, I would give this match probably like three and a quarter. And then next up after this, oh man, okay, I said nothing was horrible about the show. I stand corrected because there was one horrible match on the show, and that's this one. Next up, then we had a lingerie match between Stacy Keebler and Tori Wilson, and this was freaking horrible. Oh, I mean, yeah, this was, of course, like both Stacy and uh, Tori were part of the alliance at the time. So, yeah, this was alliance versus alliance, but of course, like this was when uh, Tori was uh, with Tajiri, who was with the WWF. So, yeah, she was kind of cold shoulder, shoulder by the alliance at this time. I um, mean, yeah, this match was just, yeah, this was awful. I mean, you had, like, Stacy and Tori in lingerie, but really just, it was pointless because it's not like they were in bikinis where, like, their asses were out or anything. I mean, it might as well have just been a normal match. It, the ring wasn't even, like, like, decorated or anything for the match. Like, the ring was just, like, exactly the same. There were no, like, pillows or anything in the ring. It was just basically just a normal match with just them wearing lingerie. And this was awful. I mean, you just had them, like, like, grabbing each other for, like, three minutes straight. They just trying to, like, just pin each other. And then at one point, they're rolling on top of the referee. Yeah. It's just freaking stupid. Yeah, this was just freaking horrible. And then, yeah, Tori ended up getting the win after three minutes after she, like, uh, hooked up Stacy's uh, legs over her head and got the pin one, two, three. So, yeah, whatever. The match was freaking terrible. Dud. Yeah. And then next up after this, then we had the first awesome match of the night. We had the Intercontinental Championship on the line in a ladder match. Christian defending against Edge. And yeah, this was a really awesome match right here. Yeah, this was, I definitely say this was better than the Unforgiven match. This was also like when Christian was now a full heel with now him joining the Alliance. But yeah, before I talk about this match, I first gotta like address Christian's uh, pre-match interview. Because in the back... Like, before the match, like, he was being interviewed by Lumen Garcia, and yeah, Christian was just, um, pretty much just dissing the city of St. Louis where the show was. Yeah. And he was just, like, pretty much, like, insulting, like, the St. Louis Cardinals, saying how Mark McGuire's record was beat by a better player, and the Cardinals were beat by a better team. And, yeah, just, yeah, Christian just, yeah, he... All of us here in Arizona just, like, fell in love with Christian with this promo because he was just, like, dissing the Cardinals. He was, uh, praising, basically praising the Diamondbacks because, of course, like, the Diamondbacks that year beat the Cardinals in the National League Division Series. So, yeah, Christian just seemed to be, like, a Diamondback supporter at this time by saying that. And, of course, like, the night after, um, the uh, Diamondbacks won the World Series against the Yankees on the episode of Raw that took place somewhere in New York, Christian came out wearing a Diamondbacks jersey. So, yeah, thank you, Christian. We love you. <laughs> right, yeah, but anyway, so talking about getting to the match itself, yeah, this was a really, really awesome match. I mean, yeah, like I was talking about last year when I reviewed Unforgiven 2001, uh, Lundrick has said that he feels that this feud was just was, was kind of disappointing, and he really didn't think that it was that good, because, yeah, he, I talked about it last year. He just says that he feels that because, like, both Edge and Christian were just, like, finding their feet as singles guys, I was like, uh, the, the few that they had had just, uh, uh, really wasn't all that good. And he just, like, felt that it, it just, like, uh, yeah. Yeah, he just felt that it really wasn't as good as it could have been. But, yeah, I really did like it. And, yeah, this match really was just really, really good. Like I said, this match just seemed, like, more personal, and, like, like, more, like, with hatred in it, because, yeah, when they're matching over here, Christian was still, like, technically still part of the WWF, so it really wasn't, like, like, really just a, um, really, like, brutal rivalry or anything, because, yeah, Edge was, like, kind of holding back, but now here with now Christian now being part of the alliance, like, Edge was saying that he no longer has to feel guilty about hurting Christian, isn't because, yeah, Christian just, he no longer considered Christian his brother anymore. So, yeah, now at this point, now just Edge didn't, 
felt that he didn't need to hold back anymore. So yeah, this was like just really, really good. I mean, you just had like a bunch of brawling like all around the ring and it spilled into the crowd. There was a lot of usage of ladders in this match. And yeah, I won't at one point, like, they both, Edge and Christian, then both set up a ladder and were, like, climbing ladder, uh, separate ladders. Ladders, and were just battling each other on the outs, on both ladders, and just ended up, like, knocking each other off constantly. Like, at one point, as Christian tried to climb a ladder, Edge was on another ladder, and he just gave Edge and, well, he gave Christian an edge matic from the ladder down to the canvas, and then Christian ended up returning the favor, and then knocked and just uh, knocking Edge off of a ladder, you know? Yeah. At one point, like, as Christian was also trying to, um, um, climb a ladder, Edge was, then just ended up, like, giving Christian a diving spear right from the turnbuckles. Yeah. And there was one point where, like, uh, they were, like, fighting on a third ladder that they put up, put in the ring, and then the ladder just ended up, like, tipping over, and they both, like, just fell, fell down to the floor. I don't know if that was actually supposed to happen. It looked like it could have been a mistake, but I'm not completely sure. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, then, like, Christian was the first to recover from that, and then he, like, tried to climb the ladder, but it was, like, really slow, and then, yeah, then with two chairs that Christian ended up bringing to the ring, Edge, like, returned the favor from Unforgiven and low blowed Christian with a chair. And then he, like, set, like, like a chair on top of one ladder and then just had Christian, like, just laying a flat on, like, two separate ladders with his head, face right on the chair. And then, yeah, and Edge then, like, just returned the favor with the concertos that Christian gave to him. Edge then gave Christian a concerto on top of the ladder. ladder and yeah, then that just finished Christian off, and that allowed Edge to retrieve the uh, Intercontinental title and win the championship back from Christian. So, yeah, so a really, really awesome ladder match, and yeah, just a really, really awesome match between Edge and Christian. Like I said, it, I definitely say that this was a better match than the match in Unforgiven. Just, yeah, such an awesome match right here. I would give this probably, I don't know, Three and three quarters, four stars, I don't know. You'll find, you'll see my final rating down in the description. But yeah, this definitely was an awesome match. So yeah, awesome stuff here. Yeah. And then this is kind of like the, the point in the show where you kind of like just have like, it, it is like just kind of like average stuff and nothing really all that hot. The next match after this was... The WWF Tag Team Championships on the line. The Dudley Boys defending against Big Show and Tajiri. And this really was just like, kind of just a match that came and went. It was really average. Nothing really that memorable about it. Yeah, uh, it was just kind of like average back and forth action between both teams. Yeah, I really don't remember really much from this match. I just kind of like remember the last uh, couple of minutes from it where like a... Uh, uh, Tajiri tried to um, spit mist in Bubba's eyes, but Bubba moved out of the way, and Tajiri accidentally spit the mist in the referee's eyes, and the referee was blinded. blinded. And then, yeah, once, uh, like, a, uh, it looked like Big Show and Tajiri had the win, but the referee was still blinded, so it didn't make the count. Yeah. And then, and at one point, then Rhino then just came out and gored Big Show, and then, yeah, Tajiri tried to... Um, um, battle back, and then at one point, Jerry just thought, ended up running into a 3D by the Dudley Boys, and that allowed the Dudley Boys to pin to Jerry, and the Dudley Boys got the win and retained the titles. So, yeah, very standard match. Uh, I would give that probably like two and a half stars. And next up, then after this, then was Undertaker versus Booker T, and a pretty disappointingly boring match. <sighs> yeah, just. Uh, I don't know what to say, just, yeah, 2001 really just was not one of Undertaker's better years, I mean, yeah, the year was pretty crappy for him, I mean, yeah, the, the feud that he and Kane had with Stone Cold Triple H that year, like, especially, like, going into Judgment Day 2001 with their match with each other, just, yeah, the match Undertaker had with Stone Cold, just, it really wasn't all that good, and then, of course, like, he had the, uh, feud with DDP, me, which really wasn't very good, and then, yeah, and then he uh, just had, like, stuff like this going on. 
And I know, yeah, and of course, like the Night Undertaker and Kane had chronic and unforgiving, freaking terrible stuff there. Ugh. And then, yeah, then he gets like stuff like this. Just, uh, yeah, this just kind of seemed more like a match that would like happen on Raw or SmackDown at the time. Just, yeah, this just really was just a very, very a substandard, boring match. Really, just uh, I really don't just don't remember anything from it. Yeah, it just really was not a a good match. I mean, it really was not interesting at all. It was really boring. Just, yeah, just, this. I don't even know what to say about it. Just, it wasn't good. I mean, I, Booker T tried to do the same dirty tactics that Test did in the match with uh, Kane, but yeah, this time it was a WWF referee, Tim White, officiating the match, so he didn't allow it. Yeah. And then, yeah, in the end of this match, The Undertaker gets the win by giving a last ride to Booker T from the turnbuckle, or the corner of the ring, rather. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I would give that probably, like, I don't know, two stars, two and a quarter, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, but then, yeah, after this, then the show does pick back up. Next up, then we get the WCW title on the line, The Rock defending against Chris Jericho, and this match was absolutely awesome. Yeah, I've talked about it before, how The Rock and Chris Jericho really did have great matches together, and this match was just no exception. This match was just absolutely awesome. Yeah, I mean, I really did like, like, The Rock and Chris Jericho's uh, rivalry that they had going on at this time, where, like, both guys were, like, in the w part of the WWF, and, I mean, like, either one of them really were, like, really heels at the time, but, yeah, you could just see, like, how much animosity that they had for each other at the time, because, yeah, they, like, were always going at it with each other, like, in the locker rooms they went at it, and then even, like, in the ring they attacked each other and stuff, and, like, just, like, like, giving insults at each other, so, yeah, yeah, so it was interesting to see, like, two WWF guys really having a rivalry like this, and not really have it be, like, a WWF guy versus an alliance guy, so I really did, like, find it really interesting, and you also did, like, kind of have a mixed chance for this crowd, because, yeah, seeing as how both guys really were, like, technically faces at this time, you had, like, like, people, like, cheering The Rock, and people cheering Chris Jericho, yeah. But, yeah, this was just, like, an absolutely awesome match. Just great back-and-forth action between both The Rock and Chris Jericho. This really is, like, one of the best matches of both guys' careers. This match was just so awesome. I mean, I loved this match ever since I was a kid, and I still love it now. Just, oh, this match is just absolutely awesome. Awesome, yeah, I mean, you know, like, the... And now both guys just like in, uh, like doing like everything in this match. Like Chris Jericho hit a rock with a springboard drop kick like through the uh, ring apron, and yeah, Chris Jericho like you like had several near falls on the rock, and then the rock like started to like uh, come back, and 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 yeah, the rock then like at one point hit a superplex on Chris Jericho, and then the rock also like 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 just did a bunch of his moves on Chris Jericho, and then. At one point, like, uh, Chris Jericho then, like, uh, uh, hit the rock with the rock bottom and a lion saw. It didn't look like that might have been it, but the rock kicked out. And then Jericho then, like, at one point then hit the rock with a one-handed bulldog. And then Jericho tried to hit the rock with the people's elbow, but the rock avoided it and then just countered it right into a sharpshooter. Yeah. Yeah, but Chris Jericho was able to get to the ropes to force Rock to break the hold, and then the Rock then at one point then just ended up a uh, rock bottom and Chris Jericho through the Spanish announce table. Yeah. Yeah, and then, and eventually then, yeah, The Rock then, like, tried to go for the people's elbow on Chris Jericho, but Chris Jericho countered it into the walls of Jericho, and it looked like The Rock may have actually, like, tapped out, but then, yeah, then Stephanie then just, like, came out, and then she just ended up, like, throwing a chair into the ring, and then, and, uh, yeah, it looks like she was trying to, like, screw over Chris Jericho, because, of course, like, we all know, like, the hatred that Stephanie had for Chris Jericho at the time, but, yeah, there was, really, but, yeah, The Rock didn't, yeah, she really didn't, like, The Rock either, like, The Rock and Stephanie had nothing going on, like, of course, like, The Rock didn't have any feelings to Stephanie, like, he despised her, too, and, yeah, it was... And then when The Rock, like, saw Stephanie at ringside, The Rock then just, like, brought Stephanie into the ring and gave her a rock bottom. Yeah, and then as the referee was, like, busy with Stephanie, then Chris Jericho then just, like, like, then just dropped the rock face first onto the steel chair, I guess, like, 
kind of like Mrs. Skull crushing finale. Yep. Yeah. And then that allowed Chris Jericho to then pin The Rock. And then Chris Jericho won the WCW title. So, so yeah, Chris Jericho finally won the big one. Remember as a kid, I absolutely loved this moment. I was just so happy that Chris Jericho did win the championship here. Yeah. Yeah, and just, yeah, and this was actually now the second year in a row that The Rock ended up losing the title at No Mercy. Because, of course, like, the year before, he lost the WWF title to Kurt Angle, and now here he loses the WCW title to Chris Jericho. So, yeah, No Mercy just is not The Rock's pay-per-view. And then as Chris Jericho was then just celebrating on the turnbuckles, then Rock was just standing in the ring holding the chair, and it looked like he was going to hit Chris Jericho with the chair, but The Rock then just, like, and just handed the chair to Chris Jericho and ended up leaving. So, yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah. Over time, like, th there would be more between them. Like, the next night on Raw, like, The Rock and Chris Jericho ended up winning the tag team title. But before the match, like, The Rock ended up, like, handing a chair to Chris Jericho saying that he's going to need it the next time he faces The Rock. So, yeah. And, yeah, there would be more stuff like this the coming weeks. Of course, like, The Rock ended up, like, winning the WCW title back a few weeks later. And then, of course, like, there would be more... Or the stuff like, of course, at Vengeance, Chris Jericho won the title from The Rock again. And, of course, like, becoming the Undisputed Champion. And then it would kind of continue on in 2002 with them, like, facing each other at the Royal Rumble. And, yeah, just more stuff like that. That, like, they would, like, face each other some more after this. So, yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, I really did like this match. Just a really, really awesome match. And, yeah, if you haven't seen this match before check it out because it is an absolute must see like i said one of the best matches of both guys careers so yeah i give that match four and a half stars freaking awesome yeah and then we got the main event no disqualification triple threat match for the wwf championship stone cold defending against kurt angle and rob van dam and yeah, this was a pretty great match too. Not as good as Rock and Chris Jericho, but still a pretty great match once again. I mean, I thought it was interesting that they put um, RVD in this match. Which, I mean, I think a lot of people were just expecting this to be like another Kurt Angle Stone Cold match, but they added RVD in. And yeah, I guess just because of like how how like hot RVD really was of course like the most over guy in the alliance at this time I guess like the WWF just wanted to like actually give him a pay-per-view main event title shot uh, so yeah and I thought it was an interesting way to kind of like mix things up to add RVD into this rather than it just being another Stone Cold Kurt Angle match yeah and of course like in this match Stone Cold was was the WWF champion again like um of course, like, the month before Unforgiven, Kurt Angle won the title from Stone Cold. Well, but, yeah, a couple of weeks before uh, this uh, show, Stone Cold ended up uh, winning the title back from Kurt Angle. So, Stone Cold was, once again, the champion going into this match. Yeah, I personally would have, have had it be, like, whole, I would have, like, held off Stone Cold for getting the title until uh, this show. I thought it may have been a better idea to actually let Kurt Angle hold the title until the next pay-per-view when Stone Cold could win it back there. But, yeah, if Stone Cold ended up, like, winning the title back on Raw a couple of weeks before this. So, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, it's all these years later. What are we going to do about it? Yeah. So, yeah, but like I said, this was a pretty great match once again. Yeah, it was kind of interesting what was going on with RVD at this time because, yeah, RVD was still, like, in a, you know, like part of the alliance at this time. But, yeah, during this time, it really, like, made it seem like RVD was... They could have, like, uh, turned to the WWF at this time, because you just didn't know, like, what he was really going to do, because was he, like, siding with the WWF, was he siding with the Alliance, because, yeah, he was, like, at one point, like, he, on Raw, he did, like, give a Kurt Angle a five-star frog splash and stuff, but then over time, like, with RVD, like, agreeing to this match, and then, and, like, uh... There was also, like, showed that RVD was actually in a limo with Vince McMahon. It kind of looked like RVD was going to a jump ship to the WWF. And even, like, Stone Cold was really skeptical about RVD. He just told RVD that he's either with him or against him. Him and, yeah, and even on, like, the previous SmackDown, Stone Cold ended up attacking RVD. And then with Stone Cold and Kurt Angle both down the ring, RVD gave a five-star frog splash to Stone Cold. So, yeah, it was interesting. You just really didn't know where RVD really stood. Was he with the WWF? Was he with the Alliance? You just really didn't know really where he stood anymore at this time. 
So yeah, but yeah, this was just a really great, ma a pretty great match once again too. Like it started off with just like with Stone Cold and RVD both being in the alliance, like double teaming Kurt Angle at first, first. But then yeah, they then the two of them then like ended up like going at it eventually. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, just all three guys, I uh, just like all got in like like a bunch of all like all got in like their share of offense in the match. Heck yeah, then, uh, yeah, our, uh, Stone Cold ended up, like, catapulting Kurt Angle into the steel steps off the of the ring, and then, yeah, Stone Cold, uh, Kurt Angle also, like, threw Stone Cold into the crowd, and then, yeah, RVD also, like, hit, uh, tried to do a five-star frog splash on both guys, on Stone Cold and Kurt Angle, when both of them were, like, just laying inside the ring, but both guys ended up, like, moving, and RVD hit nobody, yeah, it was never actually, like, revealed, who RVD was actually going for for that five star frog splash? Yeah, but regardless of who, yeah, he missed because both guys moved out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah, Stone Cold then hit a stunner on Kurt Angle, you know, but RVD like stopped Stone Cold from winning. And then yeah, RVD also hit a corkscrew moonsault on Stone Cold for a near fall. And then yeah, Kurt Angle hit an angle slam on RVD, but RVD survived. Well, yeah, Stone Cold broke up the pin, rather, yeah. yeah. And then, eventually, like, Stone Cold, like, uh, tried to, um, pile drive Kurt Angle through the announce table, but Kurt Angle countered it and just backdropped uh, Stone Cold on the announce table, but it didn't break, yeah. And then, yeah, then RVD eventually then just leaped to the outside of the ring on Kurt Angle, and as the three... Of them were like leaning on the outside of the ring. Vince McMahon ended up like running down to ringside, and then um, as a uh, RVD and Kurt Angle were like slugging it, it out inside the ring, and RVD then like hit a spinning wheel kick on Kurt Angle. But yeah, as as RVD like was gonna go for like a five star frog splash or something, Kurt Angle ended up like doing a super belly to belly suplex to RVD. And then when Stone Cold got back into the ring, like Stone Cold was gonna go for the uh, center on Kurt Angle. Well, yeah, Stone Cold then hit uh, Kurt Angle with the stunner, but Kurt Angle fell to the outside of the ring. And then as Stone Cold was gonna go after RVD, Vince McMahon then just nailed Stone Cold in the back with a steel chair, and then that like busted uh, the back of Stone Cold's head open. Yeah, yeah, and then RVD then tried to um, uh, go for a five star frog splash on Stone Cold, but RVD he like ended up getting hurt, so he didn't like go for the pin. And then, then yeah, Kurt Angle then ended up like breaking up the pin attempt when RVD finally did cover Stone Cold. Yeah, and then as Kurt Angle then hit RVD with the angle slam, it looked like Stone, well, not the angle slam. Now, four uh, belly-to-back suplexes in an angle slam. It looked like Kurt Angle may have won there, but then Shane McMahon came out and just attacked Kurt Angle and threw him to the outside of the ring and into the ring pulse. And then, yeah, Vince then, like, went after Shane, and then they were just uh, fighting it out on the announce table. And then, yeah, and as that was going on, then Stone Cold then hit a stunner on RVD. And then, yeah, that allowed Stone Cold to pin RVD and get the win. So Stone Cold retained the title. So, yeah, so Stone Cold ended up getting the win here. So, yeah. So, yeah, as I said, like, I would have, like, had had this be, like, where Stone Cold regained the title rather than him, like, going into this pay-per-view as the champion. But, yeah, he was in it as a champion, and he won. So, yeah, what are you going to do? I mean, it would have been the same result, but, yeah, he was already champion going in. But, yeah, like I said, all these years later, what are we going to do about it? Yeah, so overall, it was a pretty great match. As I said, not as good as Rock and Jericho, but still a great match and a pretty great triple threat match. So I would give that probably like four stars. Yeah. So overall, the show, I would give it probably like around, uh, I don't know. I guess I would probably be like go around like the 8 out of 10 range. I mean, yeah, you did have like three awesome matches on here with the ladder match, the WCW title match, and the uh, main event. And yeah, and you still did have like some good matches as well, like the opener and uh, King vs. Test and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, so really not all that bad. Just only the lingerie match really was the only crappy thing. And like the tag title match and the uh, Undertaker Booker team match really, you know, just very average and not really that good. But yeah, still like the good stuff in the show definitely triumphs over the bad. So, 
yeah so overall a pretty great show and yeah like i said if you haven't seen it before i would suggest checking it out because it, it is definitely worth a watch with three awesome matches especially rock versus jericho that match is definitely a must see check that out at least if you haven't seen it all right so yeah so i guess that's all i can really say about it so yeah all right so i guess this is from my review of no mercy 2001 so i hope you guys enjoyed this review so thanks for watching and i'll see you guys later